I just want to be happy. That is the uh, exact thing that people say to me all the time when I ask, what inspired you to reach out to a life coach? Almost every time people have decided, I just want to be happy, but they do not know how to get from where they are to where they want to be. My core message is consistent. You can have, do, be, give, and create anything you desire. Honest to God, the only thing in your way is you. Ouch. Have a great night. So thinking about all those things that you desire, that you can have, do, be, give, and create anything you want, wanting this healthy, vibrant, loving life all starts with your thinking, right? I just want to be happy. There's no depth to that. It's really important that we define what that looks like to you. So while a therapist gets your backstory to figure out how you, how you became who you are, I don't care. Instead, I want to meet you where you are right now and help you move forward. Whew. There we go. So thinking about that, it is important that we shift from living a life by default to a life by design. That life by default is yesterday looks just like tomorrow. You jam out that to-do list at home and at work, and you go to bed exhausted, and then you do the same thing the next day. Decades can disappear, right? When you are living that space by de uh, default, you're not making intentional decisions. You just keep making the same decisions over and over. Instead, the invitation is to shift to live a life by design. What would you love? What does get you excited? Where do you want to spend your time and attention? So when I think about living a life by design, that is when you identify your dreams and your goals and your priorities and they are integrated into your everyday life, right? Default mode, you're not even thinking about it. Design mode, you're making very intentional decisions about what and who is important to you and then you're making them priorities. So what tends to happen is we have these habitual beliefs in, about ourselves and the world around us, our paradigms, right? And those habitual thoughts and beliefs about ourselves and the world around us is exactly what keeps us stuck. I like to go to bed early every evening, right? So if someone invited me out to go out for a dinner and a drink late in the evening, my immediate reaction would be, no, I don't do that. This is where that faulty thinking comes in because, in fact, restaurants are open. Bartenders are serving. Waitresses are serving, the kitchen is available, but instead I make decisions based on my current belief system and that is exactly what keeps us small and stuck. So you can apply that to your own life. What sort of decisions do you make all the time that are not in alignment with who and what you want for yourself? This happens a lot, right? So instead you want to uh, get clear and specific about what you do desire and what does get you excited. So thinking about, again, those comfort zones, when you start to make, in, uh, you're making decisions that are based on your current conditions and circumstances. This is what's so faulty. When we make decisions, we look what's in our immediate vision and then we base all of our decision making on that. That is so short-sighted. You want to pick your head up, there's unlimited resources the people that you need exist. The resources that you desire exist. The money, the time, it's all there. It's all for you. But when you are looking at just what's in your immediate vision, that's what keeps you stuck and small. So you want to start to expand your experience, expand um, your thinking and beliefs about yourself and the world around you. So I do think that comfort zone is like holding a hula hoop around your waist, yes? So inside that hula hoop, it is predictable and it is routine. However, you are the master of your universe and you don't have to take any risks or chances. So it's very easy to stay stuck and small in that space. But generally speaking, what you desire is just on the other side of that comfort zone, just on the other side of that hula hoop. And that's where it gets super scary because I've never done that before. I don't know what it's gonna look like, what if people laugh at me, what if I fall on my face, I lose my money, I lose my reputation. So then we stay very comfortable in that predictable time and space inside of that comfort zone. Makes perfect sense really, right? So thinking about that, shifting to that place of design, you want to think about 
um, what you what ignites your passion, what gets you excited. So um, you always want to focus on the solution, but what we tend to do is we focus on our problems. Why it's not fair, why the time isn't right, I don't have enough money, not enough people are in alignment, not enough people support me, so then we don't take those risks and chances. But the invitation, again, is to shift to the solution. What do you want? What resources already exist um, that you can utilize? So the law of attraction, right? You might be familiar with the law of attraction. What you think about, you bring about. What you focus on, you get more of. Like attracts like. So probably the easiest example. So I drive a white Toyota Corolla. She's out in the lot. Um, crank windows, very easy to identify. So my white Toyota Corolla, as soon as I drove off the lot, I could not believe Everybody was driving a white Toyota Corolla. They were everywhere. I couldn't believe how trendy I am, right? So, in, but it didn't shift. There weren't more or less white Toyota Corollas on the road before or after I bought my car. However, it came into my awareness, so I start to see it everywhere. The same is true when you are defining whatever it is that you would love. If you are focused on the problem, that is all you're going to see. When you shift to the solution, that's when people show up, opportunities present themselves, and you see resources that didn't exist in your vision before. So everything is a thought before it's a thing. So we want to get clear and specific about what you desire because everything starts with your thinking. So everything is created twice. Thought before it's a thing. The chair you're sitting in, someone created that in their mind before it came into physical form. The shoes you're wearing, someone created those shoes in their mind before it came into physical form. Attending this event, it was a thought before it was, came into physical form. So if you start to think about this life that you would love, your first task is to define what that would be, what that would look like. So the law of attraction, uh, some, some people might say that's a new age, woo woo life coachy, but it's really not because Buddha has talked about it, Einstein, and Jesus. And I feel like they've got quite a following, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> so when you think about Buddha talking about the law of attraction, what you think you become, what you feel you attract, what you imagine you create, this is all the law of attraction. Einstein, everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want. You cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. And then Jesus talking in the Gospel of Mark. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Right? So all of these pieces, there is evidence from ancient texts to the modern day woo-woo life coach that Everything is created twice. It is a thought before it's a thing. So you want to focus on, focus on what you desire, what excites you, what you want for yourself, because I just want to be happy has no depth. There's no depth to that. So what we're going to do today is you are going to get crystal clear about whatever it is that you desire for yourself. So when you think about your dream come true image of all the things that you want, there are four big arenas of our human existence. Our uh, relationships, our health, our financial freedom, and our careers. So when you think about your relationships, you want to think about your relationship with yourself, your spouse or partner, family, friends, the community, earth, God. Naturally, some of those relationships are more important some are not. Some relationships you want to initiate or maintain or repair. So you want to start to get clear and specific about whatever it is that you desire in the context of your relationships. And I will say the single most important relationship you will ever have is the one with yourself. If you love and respect yourself, it is effortless to love and respect other people. Right? Right. One of my clients has this uh, nasty negative voice in her head that says, that was dumb, you can't do that, you're not smart enough, don't try that, and it keeps her stuck and small. She calls that collective voice the itty bitty shitty committee, and that itty bitty shitty committee is just the most discouraging voice, so really you wanna shift that, um, 
voice in your head to a pep rally. You want to shift that voice in your head to something more encouraging and supportive. So this is one aspect of, of what you would like to define. Secondly, you want to think about your health. What would you love? Look outside your hula hoop. Look beyond those current conditions and circumstances that are in your immediate vision. Think about your emotion, uh, physical health, your body, your emotional health, your feelings and how you respond, your mental health, thinking, and then your spiritual health is anything outside of yourself that's greater than you. Again, shifting to the solution. We are very gifted at identifying the problems. And then financial freedom. How and where do you want to earn, save, spend, and give away your money? We have these funny cultural beliefs about money, um, and they're all negative. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money is the root of all evil. Uh, rich people are selfish or corrupt. We have these very bizarre relationships with money. So really, if you think about money as an energy exchange, where do you want to exchange that energy? And then your career, what sparks excitement within you? What gives you passion, meaning, and purpose, right? And that could be some, that could be your nine to five paid gig. That could be where you volunteer your time. It could be your role in your family. Whatever it is, uh, certifications, education, whatever it is that gets you excited um, and gives you those feelings of worth, that's the fun stuff. But what you really want to do, once you start to get clear and specific about what you desire, you want to record all of these. So I'm actually going to give you a homework assignment today. Um, is when you start to imagine what you would love, you want to stay focused on the solution. You want to look beyond the resources that are in your immediate vision and get clear about what would make me happy, right? Because, because I just want to be happy has no depth. I mean, that would be the same thing going to the tattoo artist. Just give me your best tattoo. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't go to the, to the architect and say, build me my dream home. There's no depth to any of that. But when you are clear and specific about whatever it is that you desire, it can manifest. So it's the same thing with your own life. You want to get very clear and specific about all of those pieces that you want for yourself. And so if you think even about you know, the quality of your life, the quality of your life is a direct reflection of the quality of questions that you ask. Right? So if you're asking small fear-based questions, you're going to get small fear-based answers. If you ask creative, expansive questions, you'll get creative, expansive answers. You know, money is always a hot topic. So if I'm coming from a place of scarcity and lack, I might say, how am I going to pay my bills this month? There's no room for movement. It's riddled with fear. So I'm gonna ask another question about money. How could I live in the Caribbean next winter and make $50,000 while I'm there? Right? Both questions are about money, but one is coming from scarcity and lack, while the other is coming from creativity and opportunity and abundance. So now I'm starting to think, well, if I really did want to live in the Caribbean next winter, you know, I did uh, live in the US Virgin Islands, a long time ago, I wonder if I could rent a room in someone's house. And then how many workshops would I need to do in hotels and resorts? And how many products and services would I need to sell? And now I'm coming up with creative solutions. It feels very different from the scarcity and lack of how am I going to pay my bills this month. So if you are constantly in that state of big picture thinking and planning and dreaming, and you are clear and specific about what you want, it's much easier to manifest. It's much easier to make physical, right? So your homework, I think this is fun. Maybe I created it though, um, is you are going to write a vision statement, right? You are going to get clear about whatever it is you desire within the context of these four arenas. And when you write this vision statement, I want you to pretend it's three years from today. And you are, and everything, everything you've recorded, everything that you've jotted down is now your current reality. And I want you to write a letter to a friend. You're not really gonna mail this letter. This is just for the sake of a writing activity because it's much easier to write to someone than it is to um, record those thoughts. And uh, write it as though it's already yours and tell them what your life is like and what you're experiencing and then how you feel about it. 
And then lastly, you're going to read this letter every evening and every morning because it is now your vision statement, right? So every time you read it, you want to imagine that it's really yours. I would say five sensorizing that, right? Once you get clear about your health, your relationships, your money, and your career, imagine what kind of conversations am I having? What am I wearing when I walk out the door in the morning? What am I doing for fun? Who am I interacting with? What do those interactions look like? Because the more you read this, morning and evening, right? The law of attraction is always in effect. So if you are focused on your desires, this is when people show up. This is when opportunities present themselves. It's really remarkable. So I've worked with hundreds of individual clients and then thousands of people in the context of workshops. And this is always the homework assignment. And I love to get those emails that say, you are not going to believe what happened. Things are starting to really shape you know, It's exactly how I described it. No kidding. I'm doing this for fun. <laughs> but it's absolutely true. Once you get clear and specific about what you desire, it is much easier to manifest. I just want to be happy has no depth. So, you are, you are deserving of living a life with passion, meaning, and purpose. And I know you can have, do, be, give, and create anything you desire. Place your attention on your intentions and prepare to shine. Thank you.